Today, we're skipping past the overwhelming world of Notion features, and instead, I'll share eight specific use cases from my daily workflow that you can implement immediately. Let's get started. Most of us have a notes database in Notion, and a beginner mistake is creating new pages for every single meeting. While this is fine for one-off chats, for recurring meetings where we want to refer back to previous discussions, this is extremely inefficient because we would have to like open, close, open, close, open, close, right? Instead, for meetings that repeat, you want to use one Notion page. And if I scroll down here, you'll see that I've added toggles to create what I call a notes thread. For each toggle, there's the date of the meeting slash chat and a meaningful name that reminds me of the context of that meeting. Ah, this is the first chat with my new manager, and this was um, the notes I took during our first face-to-face -face in New York. All this is enabled by this new thread button and expanding the settings, you'll see that we're simply inserting a toggled block below the button. And there's a dynamic like today's date here, a reminder to add a meaningful name and a divider line. So if I expand this, it's simply notes, divider line, bullet point, divider line. And to see this in action, we'll click this button and I can easily update this date to the date of the meeting. Add a meaningful name, week before I resign. Kidding, obviously. Command or control enter to expand the toggle and I can start taking notes. Pro tip, even when all the toggles are collapsed on this page, we can press command or control F, search for a word, enter, and Notion will still be able to identify and bring us to that phrase or word within the page. Staying on the topic of notes, productivity tip number two is to always include an outstanding section up top here with check boxes on the left and a resolved toggle on the right. By including this at the top of every notes thread page, we're creating a visual reminder of unresolved issues. No, not those kind of unresolved issues. And unlike normal tasks, outstanding action items and questions take a longer time to resolve. For example, when can we expect the software update to be ready for testing? My manager might need a few weeks to figure that out, but we can't afford to forget about it, so we keep it front and center until it's addressed. Once this is dealt with, I check it and move it into the resolve toggle. I'm risk averse, I don't like deleting information if I can help it. I prefer tucking it away for future reference. The third and final tip for note taking in Notion, naming. I recommend using the year, quarter, topic naming convention for notes thread pages. For example, 2030 Q1 Weekly Manager 101. This naming convention aligns with how our brains typically process and store information. We often remember events in relation to time periods rather than specific dates. In practice, when we're searching for a specific note, we recall that discussion happened in early 2030. So it's either Q1 or Q2, probably Q1. So as you can see, this naming system acts as a built-in filter. For one-off meetings like this one, I found the year, month, meaningful name format works best. For example, 2030 March, coffee chat with Jane. This again, allows us to identify the context of the note without even opening the page. Next up, I've been extremely impressed with the new Notion AI, and I'm super lucky they agreed to sponsor this video because I probably would have talked about them anyways. Diving right into an example, I'm responsible for sending a recap email every month, and this is the exact template that I use every time. Here's where the magic happens. I'm just gonna create a new section up top so you can see a side-by-side -side comparison of Notion AI and what I had previously. Press space to bring up the new Notion AI, draft a November, digest, oops, based on my October. So I'm literally telling Notion AI to reference my October digest and let's give it another one to reference September digest. Enter. And because Notion has access to all my previous monthly recap emails, it generates a new email using the exact same format with new content. So let's accept this. So you can see uh, body uh, November digest blast from the past and even the footer text down here are all exactly the same. Taking this a step further, this is the ideas page for my weekly productivity newsletter. And this is the tip I wanna share in next week's email. The content is there, but it's very rough. So what I can do is highlight all this, ask the new Notion AI, uh, rewrite this using the number one format and number two tone of voice of my previous uh, workspace essentials newsletters found in, and this is a crazy part, at 
my master content database. So yes, we can reference an entire database and not just individual pages. So what's happening is that Notion AI literally referenced the 182 newsletters I've written over the past couple of years to produce this refined draft in my tone of voice. And now I can just make some final adjustments. As you can probably tell by now, Notion AI's biggest advantage is producing output specific to my preferences because it has so much Jeff Su specific context. If you wanna try this out for yourself, click the link below to unlock the new Notion AI in your workspace. Tip number five is to always create an inbox view for your databases. Moving right into an example, I have a task view on my command center page, right? And let's say one day I'm in a rush. I create a new task, send address to brother after I land, and I forget to assign a due date. Because my tasks view here only contain tasks with a due date, the task I captured just now will most likely slip through the cracks. Unless... I created inbox view where I filter for tasks that are not done and the due date is empty. And as you can see, that task without a due date is captured right here. Put simply, an inbox view acts as a safety net for your digital workspace. It catches all those items that don't yet have a clear home. The tricky part, of course, is identifying the properties we need to filter for to create our inbox views. Here's another example. Because I follow Tiago Forte's para method, every single one of my notes should be related to a project, an area, or a resource. Put another way, notes that I create that are not tied to one of those properties are at risk of disappearing and not being found again. So for my notes database, I create an inbox view that filters for notes where the related area, resource, and project properties are all empty. For example, um, I created this note to capture equipment I need to buy for my new studio. I was clearly in a rush. I forgot to categorize it. So when I'm reviewing my notes inbox, I'm like, okay, this is related studio. So under area, I'm gonna type in and search for studio. Assign the studio and you'll see that that note has disappeared from the inbox view. If you're new to relational databases and the pair method, don't worry. I'll leave a link to my free Notion toolkit down below. You'll get the notes thread template I talked about earlier right away. And you can let me know in the comments what other templates uh, you want me to create. Moving on to a slightly more intermediate tip, we should always think of the raw database as the hidden backend infrastructure and views of that database as the front end user interface. What do I mean by this? Well, this is the raw view of my tasks database. And as you can see, there are 330 entries. So obviously I'm never gonna be doing work in this page. I mean, it's a mess and it lags even when I scroll down, right? But on my command center page, where I spend the majority of my day within my tasks view, you'll see that the source is the task database I just showed. And I simply filtered for tasks that are due in the next seven days. So as you can see, the raw task database serves as my comprehensive task repository, while targeted views like upcoming seven day tasks or monthly calendar task views provide actionable and manageable workspaces. Another example, my raw notes database looks like a mess, right? And yet if I click into, let's say the business operations area page, and scroll all the way down, you'll see that all notes related to business operations are neatly sorted by last edited time. Clicking to the settings here, you'll see that the source is the notes database we just saw, and I'm simply filtering for all notes that are related to the business operations area. So what's the implication here? Well, whenever we create new databases, let's just go through a simple example, forward slash table. Uh, let's create a new table. Let's name this resources database. We want to get in the habit of clicking the table block, turning this into a page, and clicking into the page in this raw database view, create your properties, organize it however you want, resource one, just as an example, and in another page where you're actually gonna perform the work, um, let's create a resources section here, blue, forward slash table, table view, we can now refer to the resources database we just created and create an actionable view based on that page's context. Pro tip, when it comes to workspace organization, I try my best to consolidate all my backend slash raw databases in a single location so I know exactly where to go to make changes. Buttons is one of my favorite Notion features and here are the top three ways I use them. 
First up, once all tasks are completed in a project, for example, usually the last step is to update the status property. Instead of scrolling all the way back up to change one property, I created a button that once clicked, simply changes the status to completed. Simple yet effective. Another use case, I've added three buttons to the top of my command center page for quick capture purposes. Let's say I come across a useful prompt online. I wanna capture it as quickly as possible. I click this button. I rename this to explain hard concept because that's what the prompt does. Uh, it's tagged as captured automatically and I simply paste the prompt I copied, press escape to exit out. And I did all that without having to navigate to the prompts database, create a new entry, and then come back to the command center. The button did all that in one go. Third example, this is a trips project page. I'm going to Japan later this year. And you can see that once I click this button here, not only are multiple tasks created all at once, but they're all related to this project slash trip page. Clicking into the button settings, uh, you'll see that I'm simply adding empty pages to my all task database, naming those tasks. And for the related project, I'm selecting the dynamic option like this page, meaning no matter where this button is, the task created will always be related to the page that it's on. Pro tip, this dynamic quality of the buttons feature is super useful in team settings. For example, in my Notion team space, you see that for the new task button, the person who clicks the button is assigned as the owner. So if my colleague clicks, they're assigned as the owner. If I click, I'm the owner. Next up, we have synced blocks. As a quick refresher, when we turn a normal block into a synced block, any change we make will be reflected across all instances of that synced block. This is extremely powerful when the synced information goes through frequent or regular updates. For example, as a product marketing manager, I have to follow a standardized process whenever I launch a new campaign at work. And for a reason I'm apparently too dumb to understand, the finance team changes the process every quarter, which I just love. I mean, who doesn't like surprises, right? So I have this campaign launch SOP checklist, right? And note that first, uh, only the toggle block is synced and not the checkbox itself, since I don't want that synced across all pages, just the steps themselves. Let's say I add a new step, another, another useless step. Yay, that's automatically gonna be reflected in all future instances, leading to time savings and a reduction in errors over the long run. Pro tip, I found sync blocks to be especially useful for prompting. For example, this is a prompt I use to brainstorm use cases for my newsletter, and this is the full prompt found in the toggle below. And I've added that to the newsletter template I use every time when I write a new newsletter. And since I make small adjustments every time I use this prompt, those incremental improvements are automatically applied when I make changes to the sync block, saving me the hassle of going back to the template to make changes every time. Let me know if you want a full video breaking down my prompts database. And if yes, make sure you're subscribed. If you enjoyed this, you might want to check out my full Notion playlist. See you on the next video. In the meantime, have a great one.